So it's been a busy week in the MASH IT studio. We've just finished looking at the Core Ultra 200 range of laptops from Lenovo, and now it's time for some AMD love with the Yoga Pro 7 Gen 9 with the AMD Strix processor. This is one special unit, an attractive 14.5 inch laptop with a beautiful 120 Hertz 2.8K OLED screen, a solid aluminum body that has great build quality, and we finally get the Ryzen 9 365 Strix 10 core CPU with a new AATM graphics. Could this be the best Ultrabook of 2024? Keep watching to find out. Hi, this is David at Mash IT, and here we have what I believe is one of the best thinner light laptops of this year. Now, before you ask, no, this isn't a sponsored video. I have bought this laptop myself to bring you a completely unbiased review. Now, these laptops cost us a fair amount of money, so if you want to support our channel, I would love it if you could give us a like and make sure you subscribe. I did promise my editor Gary that if we can hit 50,000 subs by Christmas, I'm going to organise a Christmas party for just the two of us. Anyway, enough of that, let's take a look at the Yoga. Now there are a ton of different Yoga models, and the Yoga Pro is the top of the line and gets the best features. As such, we get a solid laptop with a great build quality and it's all aluminium design. And despite being 14.5 inch laptop, it does have a bit of heft at 1.59 kilograms to provide a decent cooling solution, which we will take a look at later on. Now our model costs £1,440 in the UK, and for that we get the AI9-365 processor, 32 gigabytes of 7,500 soldered on LPDDR5X RAM, and a one tera SSD, and of course that OLED display. With regards to the ports, on the left side we have an HDMI 2.1, a USB-C 4, and a USB-C 3.1 port, and if we move it to the right, we can see we've got a USB-A, a headset jack, a power button, and an actual camera shutter switch to turn off the webcam. Overall, this is a good range of ports, as per the last Yoga I reviewed, though I'm not a big fan of that power button on the side, because I have picked this up a few times and accidentally hit the actual power button, putting this laptop to sleep. Now you can change that in the settings if you like, but I would have preferred it just on the deck. Now, on the front of the laptop, we get the nice lip that we would have on these Yogas to help you easily open the laptop, which can go all the way to 180 degrees, and the hinge itself is firm with minimal wobble, which makes it great for when you're typing it on your lap. Look into the keyboard deck, and we can see it is all aluminium, though we do get a fair few stickers plastered on here. And the touchpad is a nice large size. It tracks well and performs gestures brilliantly, but this is the old style springboard touchpad. I wish we do have the nice haptic ones which we're getting on some of the premium laptops these days. And also I did notice I get a very slight rattle when I'm clicking the actual clicker sometimes which does remove some of that premium feel. Now I know I am being a bit picky here, but when you spend this much on a laptop, you want it to be perfect. Now moving up to the keyboard, and we get the usual excellent Lenovo keyboard with 1.5 millimeters of travel, good pressure, and white backlighting. We also get a good range of multimedia keys, which are prioritized over the function keys, but that can be easily changed to default to the function keys first if you wish. Then either side of the keyboard, we get the speaker grills, which are hiding the four speaker setup, which sounds like this. Speaker test of the Yoga Pro 7 Gen 9 at 50% volume. And now 80%. And then finally, 100%. So there we go. Although they're not the loudest speakers in the world, they are pretty good sounding. I would quite enjoy listening to music on this, but you're going to have to crank that volume up to really enjoy it. Then we move up to the screen. And here we've got one of the stars of the show, the 14.5 inch OLED panel. This panel is an absolute thing of beauty. It's bright at 400 nits, and being OLED, it looks stunning with its 2880 by 1800 high resolution display with 120 hertz, perfect for content creation, watch movies, or even playing some lightweight games. Then moving above the screen, we get the 1080p webcam, which looks like this. And this is a video of the webcam and the microphones on the Yoga Pro 7 Gen 9 with the new Ryzen AI365 stupid name CPU. As always, love to know what you guys think of this webcam. Pop it in the comment section down below. Uh, do you think this is any good or not? Let me know. And also built into the webcam, we get Windows Hello facial recognition for those super fast logons. Right, with enough of looking around it, let's crack it open and take a look inside. So opening up this laptop is very easy. We're talking six 
T5 screws. Once you've taken those T5 screws out, using a suction cup, carefully pry away the actual base panel. Once we're inside, sadly there isn't a lot that we can upgrade, as per many of the other laptops this year. We can see a large 73 watt hour battery along the front and the pretty large speakers. We can see an upgradable Wi-Fi card, which is quite decent. We do get the Wi-Fi 7 as standard in this model, so you're not gonna be wanting to upgrade that for years to come anyway. And also if we look to the right, you can see a 42 millimeter SSD, which can also be upgraded. Now it is a shame they've used a 42 millimeter SSD, which does limit your upgrade options, but you could easily get a two terabyte at the moment to fit in this laptop. Looking at the cooling solution, it is obviously a little bit thicker than the previous Lenovo Yogo, so we've got slightly thicker fans, and we have a two heat pipe cooling system with twin fans pumping the hot air through the hinge. Now this can take up to 55, 60 watts through this Ryzen, so that hopefully will give us some decent performance with this Strix Point CPU. So now let's put it back together and take a look at the performance. Finally, we've got the new Ryzen AI9 365 in a laptop so we can test it. But man, I wish they could use some less confusing naming schemes for these processors. Now this 365 has four Zen 5 cores and six Zen 5C cores for a total of 10 cores and 20 threads. And man, does it actually show in the benchmarks. Running our CPU benchmarks, this processor impresses both single and multi-core scores across Geekbench 6 and Cinebench R23 and R24 benchmarks. And despite this laptop being a 14-inch Ultrabook, Lenovo allow us to put approximately 60 watts on the performance mode, which can then be scaled down to 25 watts if you put it down into the quiet mode. Now, even on that quiet mode, we're getting an impressive multi-core score that even destroys the new Intel Core Ultra 2 chips at 30 watts. Plus, it is whisper quiet in this quiet mode. When we switch it up to that performance mode, it actually puts this actual Ultrabook chip right up there with the bigger Intel chips, which is the 13700H that we've reviewed in previous laptops. Moving over to the GPU side, and we get the new Radeon 880M with its 12 graphics cores, which although it provides solid scores, cannot quite match the performance of the new Arc GPUs from the Core Ultra 2 benchmarks we've just reviewed. Now this does mean that application performance on both CPU and GPU will be solid, for your photoshops, your blender and your office work, and it felt as snappy in these tasks as my beefy desktop. It was only when we came to actually doing some DaVinci Resolve video editing that this A80M shows its limitations, and it really struggled to edit my 4K 10-bit footage, unlike the new Intel Core Ultra 268V that we just reviewed. But gaming on this little beast was absolutely incredible. Running Finals and Apex at 1200p medium settings felt amazing, not only was the frame rate solid, but playing on this 120 hertz OLED screen was just absolutely beautiful and incredibly smooth with those fast response times. Now we started all of the testing with the performance mode, which gives us that solid 60 watts without any throttling, and it does it at 46 decibels, which was just a pleasant whoosh. The keyboard and the palm rest stayed comfortably cool for all of our games testing. Switching it over to the optimized profile, drop that wattage to 52 watts, but at 45 decibels. So you're losing a lot of watts for just one decibel, which in my opinion wasn't worth it over that performance mode. But if you do switch it down to the quiet mode, it drops that wattage to 25 watts, which still provides playable performance in most games, but at a whisper quiet 33 decibels. It was so quiet that I actually thought there was something wrong with the fans when I first switched to this profile. And if you're playing lighter titles, I definitely recommend using this quiet profile to enjoy the silence. So with main's performance out of the way, how did it fare on battery? Now this was a bit of a mixed bag, and sadly, single core performance was lackluster on battery, no matter what profile we were using. Now this is unusual. Now normally on battery, if you use the performance profile, you do get reasonable performance at the expense of battery life. But all these profiles performed exactly the same. This means that it will feel noticeably less snappy on battery than it does in mains for day-to-day -day tasks. And strangely, the multi-core performance was pretty strong on battery through all those three profiles again. So I'm hoping this is something that Lenovo will actually change in the BIOS updates in future, as this laptop has only just been released. Now gaming on battery was also impressive, like the multi-core performance, as we can see by the time by score when we compare it to the mains. But don't expect to be gaming for about more than an hour and a half on this laptop, because it does eat that battery. Talking of battery life, and in our usual battery test streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness with the screen set to 60 hertz, we managed eight hours and 20 minutes. Now this isn't a bad score, especially as we have an OLED screen in here, and I think that's mostly due to the large 73 watt hour battery that's clearly helping with this performance runtime. Also being USB-C powered, we get a nice compact 100 watt charger, plus we can also use a decent power bank, or even a monitor 
or dock with power delivery to give us that one cable setup, which I absolutely love when I can go into my office, plug in my USB-C cable and have everything up and running. Now, before we move over to the conclusion, I do want to quickly mention the Vantage software that they provide to control this laptop. Now, this is something that I really do like to sort of talk about because it is really good on these laptops. Now, the Vantage software is lightweight, it's snappy, fast to open, and gives you all the functions that you need easily to adjust your performance profiles, your keyboard setup, your backlighting, your battery sort of protection, all within this one bit of software. I really do like it, and having used Alienware and Razer, I do much prefer this Vantage just because it's so lightweight. With that said, I don't like the fact that on a premium laptop that's this expensive, it comes installed with McAfee antivirus software. That disgusting piece of software should not be on any laptop, especially over $1,000 or £1,000. So come on Lenovo, get rid of that piece of rubbish. So then, on to the conclusion. And I have to say, I really love this laptop. I love this form factor, the build quality, the screen, the keyboard, the speakers. Most of this laptop is absolutely great. There's a slight rattle in this touchpad, which is a little bit annoying, but quite often the case with some of these yogas. And I'm not so much of a fan of the actual power button on the side, but otherwise, an absolutely excellent machine. This actual Strix Point Ryzen chip is incredible. We get a 60 watt power budget, and the CPU performance with its 20 threads is amazing. If it wasn't for the fact that we just had the more efficient Intel Core Ultra chips that have just come out, we've just reviewed, I would be wholeheartedly recommended this to go out and buy it now. But things have become more difficult. Now, if it's just CPU performance, these Strix Point processors are amazing, especially with this 60 watt power budget. And the 30 watt Intel Core Ultra 268V we just reviewed didn't do quite so well on the actual CPU. But the GPU, that new Arc GPU that you get, is slightly better than the actual 880M that we've got in this laptop. And when it came to the actual battery life, which was incredible on that new Core Ultra chip, and video editing because of its inbuilt codecs, it makes it a bit more difficult to make a choice. So I would say, if CPU performance is a priority, if you're on a solid machine with an OLED display, then this is a fantastic option. But if you want a laptop with better battery life that you can video edit on an Ultrabook like a MacBook, then certainly might want to consider looking at Intel Aura Edition laptop from the Yoga range. Now I will put a link to that review down below just in case you missed it. I definitely reckon that's worth checking it out. And as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Would you consider this AI965 CPU better than the new Intel Core Ultra range? Pop it down in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, I just want to say thanks for watching.